Welcome to the Academy, a series focused on the basics of Star Wars The Old Republic. I've been playing Star Wars The Old Republic for over 10 years, and I love helping guide new players into the game. I've put together this massive list of tips for new players, whether you haven't even started up the game yet, or if you've just recently made a character. These will make your life so much easier and make the game more fun. Star Wars The Old Republic is an incredibly fun game to get into. The cutscenes are some of the best you'll find in any online game fully voiced, and the class origin stories will take you on a journey to a long, long time ago, set in a galaxy that exists thousands of years before the Star Wars movies take place. In the game, you can play as one of eight classes, each one with a unique story and a unique set of combat styles that range from the clever and cunning Imperial Agent to the noble and powerful Jedi Knight. Whether you're new to online gaming or have more experience, if you enjoy Star Wars, I would definitely recommend trying out Star Wars The Old Republic. Are you ready? Let's jump into the tips and tricks list. Number one, you can choose to install the game through SOTOR.com or through Steam. If you're already familiar with Steam, I suggest downloading it there as it lets you auto update the game when updates become available. Otherwise, it's about the same either way. Number two, your first step will be to choose a server. When you go to create your character, the game will automatically choose one for you, but you can go back a step to the server selection screen and choose manually. Choose a server based on your location and language. Number three, your second step will be to choose a faction. You can only play with players on the same faction, and your faction affects which stories you can choose when creating a character. Number four, each class has its own storyline, and each faction has its own storyline per planet. If you're on a free-to-play account with a limit of four characters, I'd recommend choosing one Imperial character and one Republic character so you can explore both sides of the planetary stories instead of doing the same one twice on the same faction. Your third step will be to choose an origin story, sometimes known as your class story. Each origin story is unique. The most commonly chosen classes are the Jedi Knight, followed by the Sith Warrior, but many players aim to eventually play each class at least once, as the class stories are considered some of the best content in the game. Number 6. Your origin story, or class, used to also determine which roles you could play in combat and which weapons you can wield. But things have changed since the launch of the game. Now, if you're a Jedi, you'll be able to choose between all light side Jedi combat styles. If you're a Sith, you'll be able to choose between all dark side Sith combat styles. If you choose a tech class, a class that wields a blaster rather than a lightsaber, you'll be able to choose from any of the tech combat styles. As you play more, you may even be able to create some interesting previously forbidden combinations, like a Jedi with dark side powers in combat. Number 7. If you're a subscriber, once you've reached chapter 3 of your story on at least one character on your server, you'll be able to add a second combat style to your characters, and you'll be able to swap between the ones you chose at character creation and the second one you added on afterwards. For example, on my trooper character, I chose Vanguard as my combat style when I created her, and later on, I added the operative combat style to her. Now I can swap between being a Vanguard who can tank and be an operative with stealth. You can only swap between the two you've chosen. You cannot combine them in any way. Both your first and second combat style choices are permanent, so choose wisely. Number 8. On a free-to-play account, you'll only have access to playing three species, humans, cyborgs, and zabrax. There is a variety of ways to unlock the other species. While all of them are difficult to do on a free-to-play account, your species doesn't have a major effect on the game, so pick the one that interests you the most. Number 9. You'll need to pick a character name that no one else has already chosen, which can sometimes be hard to do. Number 10. When choosing a character name, you can have a space in it to make a first and last name. You can also use up to two apostrophes and one dash in your character name. Number 11. You're limited to four characters per server on a free-to-play account, but you could make four more characters on another server, four more on the next, and so on, for a total of up to 24 characters. Keep in mind, though, your characters on different servers don't share anything together. They are completely separate. Number 12. If you're playing with a friend, make sure to choose characters on the same server and same faction, or you won't be able to play together. It's also recommended to pick two different classes that start on the same planet. Those pairs include picking a smuggler and 
Stormtrooper, picking a Jedi Consular and Jedi Knight, picking a Sith Warrior and Sith Inquisitor, or picking an Imperial Agent and Bounty Hunter to play together. Number 13. The very first thing you'll see when you enter the game is a cutscene. The game uses cutscenes to advance the story and the choices you make can affect your storyline. If you accidentally make a wrong decision or didn't like your conversation choice, you can quickly press escape on your keyboard quickly to exit and redo the cutscene, as long as the cutscene hasn't ended yet. Number 14. If the cutscene has already ended and you really didn't like the choice you made, in some situations you can open up the quest log and reset the quest as long as you aren't currently located in an active phase and don't mind restarting the quest from the beginning. Number 15. While your story decisions are permanent, your dark side and light side points are not. You can always earn more dark or light side points later. Number 16. If seeing dark or light side options in cutscenes is important to you, you can turn on the the setting to show conversation alignment gain. Number 17. Not sure where to go? Look for the purple quest marker on the map. It will lead you to your main storyline quests. Number 18. If you're the type of player who wants to play every single quest, the first thing you'll want to do is open your map by pressing M and then you can toggle on show exploration missions in the filters. This will allow you to see all the extra exploration quests in the game, which are hidden and deactivated by default. Number 19. If you only want to see the most important quests or are feeling overwhelmed, only follow the quests that have purple symbols on the map and over quest givers' heads. There is no right or wrong way to play. Some players blast through just the purple quests as they get bored by the side quests, while other players like to take their time and explore. Number 20. You can also make it so a semi-transparent overlay map shows up as you quest. To get it to show up, try pressing M or Alt. M on your keyboard. Number 21. Here's the most useful keyboard keys to know. W, A, S, D to move around. Hold your left mouse button down and drag your mouse around to look around. Hold your right mouse button and drag it to aim your character's direction. And when you find blue glowing objects or quest givers, try right clicking them or left clicking them to activate them. Number 22. If you're used to a different style of movement from other games, you may like to go into the key binding settings and change it so instead of turning left and right using A and D keys, you'll change it to the strafe key binding so you instead run left or right with A and D. Number 23. When running from quest to quest, press the num lock key on your keyboard to auto run. You can then use your mouse to adjust the direction you're running by holding down right click and dragging your mouse towards the correct direction. Number 24. If a traditional mouse and keyboard isn't working for you, either because you're a console gamer or because you have a disability that makes using a keyboard a challenge, you can set up Sotor to work with an Xbox or PS4 controller with some extra work. Number 25. As you run around, you you might occasionally get stuck in things like rocks or trees. If your character ever gets stuck, open the chat window by pressing enter on your keyboard and type slash stuck to get teleported away. Try not to get stuck in the same place again because this slash stuck function has a two minute cooldown. Number 26. Finished a quest and don't want to run back all the way? You can use your quick travel or fast travel ability to instantly travel back to certain locations on the map by pressing P on your keyboard to open your abilities. It's in the general section with a blue icon. You can even drag and drop the icon onto your quick bars for easier access later. Do keep in mind it does cost credits. Number 27. Your legacy is something shared between all your characters on your server. You get to create your legacy after you finish your first planet. Anytime after that, you can view your legacy by pressing Y on your keyboard. Number 28. When a panel pops up asking you to choose your legacy name, choose wisely. This name doesn't have to be unique unlike character names and is meant to represent all your characters. You can change it later but it's fairly expensive to do so. Number 29. There are tons of hidden achievements to find and explore while you're leveling on a planet. If you enjoy achievements, they can be found in your legacy panel. You can do some achievements all in one go, while others are meant to be done across many characters over a large period of time. There are also many fun and interesting hidden secret achievements. Number 30. This is what a lore object looks like. It's something in the open world that's glowing blue. 
but isn't a part of your quests. Every one of these you find unlocks a lore entry that you can read. Number 31. Every planet you visit while doing your main class quest has hidden datacrons that boost your stats across all your characters on your server. Some can be tough to find, and others send you on jumping puzzles. You can see which datacrons you found in your legacy panel. Number 32. This is the sound a datacron makes. Sparkle, 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 sparkle. If you hear it, there's a datacron nearby. Number 33. Once you've decided if you like the game or not, you'll start wondering about whether you should subscribe. If you're a low-level player, there's no pressing need to subscribe right away. And as long as you don't mind the minor restrictions, you can carry on on your free-to-play account for a long time and won't run into any major issues until you hit level 60 or until you've reached the end of the second free expansion as the first two expansions are free along with the base game. Number 34. Subscribing to the game unlocks all the current expansions. You do not need to buy them all one by one individually, and you don't even need to remain subscribed later to play the expansion storylines that you have unlocked. Number 35. Do not buy cartel coins to get preferred status. It's a bad deal. Instead, it's a much better deal to subscribe for just one month. Subscribing even for only one month will automatically unlock all the current expansions in the game. Even if you cancel the next month, you'll still become preferred this way, but you'll also have the expansions, which you don't get if you only buy cartel coins. Number 36. If you plan to subscribe, there's sometimes special bundles available that are a better deal than just outright buying a subscription. The Join the Fight bundle on SOTOR.com slash buy and the Deluxe Pack on EA.com are both great deals. Number 37. Your discipline is your style of fighting, and each combat style can swap between three different disciplines. When you create a character, you're assigned a discipline automatically, so you can jump in and start playing. Number 38. If you want to change your discipline later, you can easily switch it at any time you're in a rest area or cantina. The easiest one to get to is the fleet itself. You can later unlock the option to switch anywhere on a planet, but you'll never be able to switch while you're inside an instanced area or in a flashpoint. Number 39. Your ability tree allows you to make choices about your character in combat and affects how your abilities work. There's no restrictions to switching up your ability tree choices, but you can't switch them while you're in combat. Number 40. As you level up, you'll naturally gain more abilities, and they'll show up on your quick bars automatically as you earn them. Number 41. When you start playing, you may only have one or two quick bars available. You can turn more on, they just default to being hidden. Free to play players get three, preferred get five, and subscribers get six. You can turn more on by clicking the very small symbol of a cross near your quick bars, and choose the extended quick bars option from the list to easily enable all the ones you have available. Number 42. Some abilities are meant to be used defensively, while others are mainly for attacking. Figure out which ones those are so you can use them in a pinch. Number 43. To quickly switch between enemies, press the tab key on your keyboard. There's also a setting called Auto Target Closest Enemy. You can toggle in your settings in the control section under General. Number 44. While you're running around picking up loot, you may find it useful to go into your settings and also turn on Enable Area Loot and Auto Loot on right click. Press Escape, Preferences, and it's at the top of the controls section. Number 45. If you're playing a Jedi or Sith, you'll get your first saber around level 10 at the end of your first planet. Enjoy slashing things with your practice saber in the meantime. Number 46. You'll get your first companion on your first planet, and they'll start off as a healer so they can keep you alive. But you can always switch their role by right-clicking their portrait in the bottom left of your screen. Number 47. All companions start off equal, so bring along the one you like best. While you're leveling, the most recent companion you got through the story is the one most likely to have unique lines during a cutscene. So if that's important to you, use your companions in the order that you got them. Number 48. If your companion dies in combat, Combat, just right-click their portrait to dismiss them and resummon them. It's quicker than reviving them and healing them. Number 49. Companion gear does not matter. It's just for looks and won't make them stronger. A companion's strength is based on their influence with you and grows when you bring them along for conversations, crafting, and by giving them companion gifts. Number 50. As you quest, you'll be able to pick up items along the way. Some of them will be trash that's meant to be sold to vendors for credits. All vendors have a button you can press to quickly sell trash. Number 51. You can also send your companion to go and sell trash for you, instead of having to wait until you're near a vendor. If your inventory is starting to get full, right-click your companion's portrait to send them to sell trash. 
Number 52. If your companion is missing, look for the blank blue character portrait on the bottom left of the screen and click the small arrow there to resummon them. Number 53. If even that blue circle is missing, press N on your keyboard, find your companion in the companions and contact list, and press the arrow beside them to resummon them. Number 54. If your companion is with you, but is just kind of staring at you instead of helping you in combat, they may be on passive mode. You can turn passive mode on and off with the button that looks like a pair of crossed arms in a blue shirt on the bottom left of the screen, near your companion's portrait. There's a little blue light at the bottom of the icon to show if passive mode is on or off. Number 55. Passive mode can be really useful. Want to run away from some enemies, but your companion is sticking around to fight them? Put them on passive mode to get them to come to you so you can run out of combat. Number 56. Heroic quests are designed for groups of 2 to 4 players. High level or highly skilled players can often take them on alone, but while you're leveling, you're not expected to be able to tackle these alone, as enemies are much stronger than normal. Number 57. Most heroic quests on planets are repeatable once per day. You can easily see some of the heroics available to you through the activities panel, which can be accessed through the icon of three little people on your minimap in the solo tab. Number 58. All heroics, once picked up, will also have a fast travel button when they are showing in your quest tracker that will teleport you directly outside the hero quest via a shuttle. Number 59. Before you earn your ship, you'll be a bit limited when it comes to traveling between planets. If you ever get really lost and can't figure out how to get back to your first or second planet, use your Emergency Fleet Pass ability by pressing P on your keyboard to open your abilities and then going to the General tab. From there, on the fleet, open your map with the M key and hover your mouse over the four elevators at each end of the cross shape on the fleet. One of them will have a shuttle that leads back to where you need to be. Number 60. You'll get your ship after you have completed your class story on your second planet, which will be Drummond class Imperial side or Coruscant, Republic side. Once you have your ship, you can freely travel the galaxy. Number 61. Want to travel around the galaxy quickly? You can open the galaxy map by pressing Shift M, or you can get there through your map. Note that traveling this way sometimes doesn't trigger quest requirements, and if it doesn't work, just go back to your ship and travel to the planet manually. Number 62. Once you've finished your first few planets, you may want to travel around between planets more. The easiest and fastest way to get to any planet is to use the heroic travel button in the activities tab, even if you don't plan on doing the heroics there. This trick not only saves you the fuel cost of using your ship, it also bypasses the space station traveling step, which saves time. Number 63. If you're on a free-to-play account, you'll eventually reach the credit cap of 1 million credits. Any credits you earn beyond that point get stored in your escrow. You don't lose them, but you can't access them until you subscribe. Don't worry though, you probably won't even come close to this cap until level 50 or higher. Number 64. All missions reward more credits at a higher level than they do at a lower level. This means that trying to earn credits at a low level isn't very efficient. Number 65. Luckily, there's not a lot to buy with credits while you're leveling up. I recommend saving your credits for later, either to buy nice looking cosmetic items or useful unlocks. Number 66. One easy way to make credits even at a low level is to complete Conquest, which becomes available at level 10 and up. The Conquest tab is available in your missions log panel, and it's a weekly set of rotating objectives that you can complete to earn a reward, which includes a pile of credits. There's even many low level objectives like give a gift to your companion or level up. Number 67. Other low-level credit-making activities include running heroic missions or flashpoints and selling any unbound items you get. Number 68. Once you reach the fleet at about level 10, you'll be able to buy and sell things on the GTN, the Galactic Trade Network, which is the player-run market. It's the big green box in the Galactic Trade Market section of the fleet. Number 69. Good things to sell include crafting materials and companion gifts you don't plan on using. Number 70. To search the GTN for a specific item you already own, shift left click the item while you have the GTN open. It will copy the item's name into the search box. This is a great way to find out what something is worth and how much you could sell it for. Number 71. It's not recommended to buy any gear with stats from the GTN. 
because you outlevel gear so quickly and there's other ways to get it. Number 72. On a free-to-play account, you can't unlock a speeder that allows you to travel faster until level 25. There are two places to get an inexpensive speeder at that point. Check the GTN under the category Mount, then sort from lowest to highest, and also check the speeder vendor in the Galactic Trade Market section of the fleet who has speeders for as low as 8,000 credits. Number 73. If you're on a free-to-play account, you might pick up cool pieces of purple bordered gear that say they require artifact authorization to equip. You can't equip those unless you're subscribed or have purchased the expensive artifact unlock. The good news is you don't need great gear to do your class story. You can choose to sell that purple bordered item or save it for if you subscribe later, but you'll likely outlevel it quickly. Number 74, big ticket items you'll want to save up for include optimizing your max level in-game gear, buying luxury player housing and decorations, purchasing cool outfits and mounts for your characters, and leveling up in high-end crafting. Number 75, another great way to amass some wealth is to install a security key to your account, which adds a few extra seconds to logging in, but keeps your account safer, and also gives you a free 100 cartel coins per month. You can save these cartel coins up and either spend these cartel coins on cosmetic items or buy items to sell to other players for lots of credits. By the way, you don't have to use the official SOTOR authenticator. You could always use one like Google Authenticator or Authy instead. Number 76. If you equip an entire set of Cartel Market Armor or a Cartel Weapon or Crystal, you can get unlimited free copies of almost every type of armor or weapon for your character through the collection system. If you want to get unlimited copies of any Cartel Market item for your entire account, you can pay a Cartel Coin fee in collections to unlock it for all of your characters. Just be careful, there are a few small exceptions to this rule. If you accidentally make many copies of an item, you can easily delete them using the deconstruction button in your inventory. The icon looks like a broken lightsaber. Number 77. If you're finding your gear is at a low level, and the gear you're getting from questing isn't keeping up, go to the supply section of the fleet. There will be vendors that sell armor modifications for a wide variety of lower levels up to level 70. At a higher level, you'll need to go earn gear instead. Number 78. Armor modifications in-game are called armorings, modifications, enhancements, barrels, and hilts. These are bits and pieces with stats attached to them that you can put into your armor to make it stronger. Number 79. Not all pieces of gear are moddable. Number 80. If you want to get an easy set of customizable moddable gear, head to the adaptive gear vendor in the supply section of the fleet in a corner room with other vendors. This vendor sells tons of different empty adaptive armors for a very low cost. Number 81. To modify gear, control right click on its icon in your inventory or from your equipment panel. You can then drag modifications from your inventory into your gear. This is also an easy way to check if something is moddable or not. Number 82. Stats on gear can be a bit confusing. The Mastery, Crit, and Alacrity stats are good for characters that do lots of damage or heal. Accuracy is what allows you to hit things when you're a damage player. The Endurance, Shield, Absorption, and Defense stats are good for characters who want to tank. Don't mix and match these two types of stats. You don't need high endurance or defense if your character is damage focused. Number 83. If you want a free set of low level relics, implants, and an earpiece, you can pick up the PvP intro quests from the terminal in the combat section of the fleet and try queuing up for one PvP match. These are not very strong in stats, but are great if you miss picking up a relic or implant by chance as you quested. 84. At a low level though, your stats don't matter very much. I generally tell people not to worry about gear at a low level unless they are dying a lot. Number 85. To preview a piece of armor, weapon, mount, or putt, control left click on the item, either in the chat box, in your inventory, on the GTN, or from a vendor. This will open a window that shows you a preview of how your character looks with that item equipped. Number 86. The Outfitter allows you to wear the look of any armor you like, while being able to use the stats from your main armor you use for combat. That means you could look like you're wearing a robe you picked up at level 10, but keep the stats of your level 20 armor. Number 87. There are also many items in the game that are meant to be purely cosmetic. They don't have any stats on them and are meant to be used in the Outfitter. This includes all armors and weapons from the cartel market, and there are many cool cosmetic armors you can earn through various activities and reward tracks in the game. 
Number 88. You can find the Outfitter tab in your character sheet. You can then click and drag armor from your inventory into the outfit slots. Click the numbered tabs to wear that outfit on your character. If you want to instead show your armor that you're wearing as equipment, check the Show Gears Outfit checkbox. Each time you add a piece of armor to the Outfitter, it costs credits but it costs less at lower levels, so if you've got a piece of armor you want to turn into an outfit, make sure to do it as early as possible. Number 90. If you're looking for some nice, very inexpensive outfits for your character, head to that Adaptive Fender in the Supply section of the fleet. There's outfits for every class that you can mix and match, and each piece is only 600 to 3,000 credits, which is very affordable once you start hitting level 20 or so. Until you have the credits to buy an outfit you like, you can mix and match anything you pick up off the ground in the Outfitter to make an outfit. Number 91. If you find yourself running out of inventory space, you can either delete, sell, or bank your items. Number 92. To clear out your inventory, the first step is to sell your junk items. You can find vendors on the map by the credit symbol, which looks like the number 7, or look for characters in the open world that have a yellow and green box over their head. All vendors have a sell junk button you can press to quickly exchange useless items for credits. Other things in your inventory that you can easily sell are low-level med packs, low-level gear that you don't care about the way it looks cosmetically, any credit certificates you may have gotten, or just any items you don't want. Number 93. If you have any cartel market outfits and have worn the full set on that character, you should be able to get free copies of that armor in the future for that character in collections. That means you can delete the original copy or any additional copies you have in your inventory. To quickly delete items, click the deconstruction icon in your inventory, then right click the items you want to delete. Just double check in your collections that you can claim the item first before deleting. If you want to delete just one item, you can also left click, hold, and drag the item out of your inventory onto the floor. Items that are worth zero credits, some that you get for free, also can't be sold to a vendor, so I tend to delete those too if I don't want them. Number 94. You should keep all crafting materials rather than deleting them or selling them to a vendor as they are quite valuable. In your inventory, right click the icon of a diamond with an arrow and choose legendary quality. Then left click that same icon. This will force all your current and future crafting materials into your hidden materials bay, which has unlimited storage and is accessible by any of your characters. If you ever need to get those materials back, say to sell them, just click that icon of a diamond in your inventory. Later you could either craft with these or sell them to other players for a profit. Number 95. After that, for any items you actually want to keep, you'll want to store them in your banks. All players can get a free legacy bank and subscribers also get a personal cargo hold. Number 96. To get a free legacy bank, you must complete the stronghold quest on the fleet at level 15 or higher, and you'll receive a free legacy bank to put in your stronghold your own personal house so you can visit and decorate. To start the Stronghold introduction quest, head to the Strongholds and Crew Skills section of the fleet and look for a holographic quest giver. A starter stronghold only costs 5,000 credits to unlock. Once you get your first legacy bank for your stronghold, you'll be able to use the legacy banks on the fleet as well. Number 97. After reaching your stronghold and walking around a bit, you'll get a free set of decorations from the starter quest, which you can right-click in your inventory to use. Then you can click Edit Mode in your Stronghold and right-click one of the bright green squares or narrow blue rectangles on the floor. Search for Legacy Stronghold Storage in the Decorations list and place down a Legacy Bank. Number 98. You can only store items that are unbound or bound to Legacy in your Legacy Bank. I recommend using your Legacy Bank to store any bound to Legacy items you don't have in your collections, companion gifts you aren't ready to use yet, and the stackable scrap items which are a really useful type of currency. Number 99. Are you free to play and getting close to that 1 million credit limit? You can dump credits into your Legacy Bank to save them from going into escrow. Just keep in mind you can still only withdraw up to a million at a time. Number 100. Subscribers also get a green personal bank called a cargo hold that they can store bound items in, like cool looking armor you've picked up along the way. Number 101. Once you own a stronghold, you can travel to it from almost anywhere using the strongholds panel. You might visit your stronghold mid-quest to drop off some items in the bank or check your mail if you aren't near a mailbox. If you aren't a subscriber, you won't be returned to the exact spot, but instead to the planet's spaceport and you'll have to run, taxi, or quick travel back. 
However, subscribers get returned to the exact spot as long as they don't log out in between. Number 102. If you get stuck in a rock and even the slash stuck command from earlier isn't working, try traveling to your stronghold to get out. Number 103. To easily exit a stronghold or flashpoint, use the tiny exit area button near the top of the screen. 104. You can edit a huge portion of your interface by pressing Escape Interface Editor. There you can select different parts of the screen and hide them, resize them, move them, or make them more transparent by lowering their opacity. Number 105. When you start playing the game, there will be a flashing question mark sign that has tips in the middle of the screen. These can be helpful if you want to read them as you play, but if you find it annoying, you can easily turn it off in the interface editor by selecting it, then unchecking the enabled button. If your computer is laggy when your character moves around or enters combat, try lowering your graphics settings. If you don't want to lower the main graphics settings, try just turning off the shadows for a performance boost. These settings can be found by pressing escape, preferences, graphics. Number 107. You can also increase performance by turning off nameplates in preferences. Number 108. There's a lot of accessibility settings available, but they're very scattered. You can make the cutscene and chat font huge for easier reading, make the UI huge, remap your keybinds so you can use them on a controller, or use the different colorblind modes. Number 109. If you like tabbing out of the game to do other things while you're playing, like checking guides or chatting with friends, go to Escape Preferences and set the game to full screen windowed in the drop down on the graphics tab so you don't have to reload the game every time you tab out. Number 110. If you want to completely hide your interface for immersion or screenshot reasons, press Alt Z. Press Alt Z on your keyboard again when you want it to come back. Number 111. If your interface is broken or didn't load in all the way, press Ctrl U and Ctrl U again to reload it. Number 112. Fun tip? If you use Ctrl U on the character select screen, you can get a really cool screenshot of your character. Number 113. The most reliable way to take a screenshot is by pressing Windows key and print screen. This will save a screenshot in your pictures folder. Number 114. If you want to take a small screenshot or show a small part of your screen, the snipping tool that comes automatically with Windows is great. Just search for it in your Windows bar to find it. Number 115. When taking a screenshot, try spinning your character and camera around so you face the light. Hold down your left mouse button and press the left and right arrow keys on your keyboard to spin your character around in a circle until their face and chest are the most lit up they can be. Then spin your character so you can see their front by clicking, holding, and dragging your left mouse button. Some places like Tatooine, Alderaan, Makeb, and Osis all have great lighting as long as you're facing the right direction. Number 116. Want to take a fabulous screenshot? Find somewhere with good lighting and a good backdrop behind you when the light hits your character. Press Z on your keyboard to draw your weapon. Zoom in using your scroll wheel on your mouse until you can see two thirds of their body and angle your camera so you can't see the top of their head. Make sure nameplates are hidden and the UI is off with Alt Z and you've got a picture perfect screenshot. Number 117. Players like to use abilities and emotes to take interesting screenshots. You can see your emotes at the top left of your chat. Number 118. Ever wonder how other players walk slow, sometimes known as RP walking? Press the slash key above your number pad on your keyboard to slow walk. Press it again to get back to running. Number 119. If you want to zoom out even more than the game normally allows, you can edit your game's .ini file to increase the max zoom distance. Number 120. Free-to-play players can't use chat to talk to other players until level 25. This restriction mainly exists to keep spammers out of the chat channels. Don't worry, level 25 comes pretty quick and you should reach it by your second or third planet. Number 121. The only way Republic and Imperial players can talk to each other in the open world is the slash say channel. So if you're on a Jedi and want to say hi to a nearby Sith, type in slash say or select it from the yellow speech bubble drop down menu on the bottom left of the chat menu before you type your greeting to them. Number 122. Don't like seeing chat? You can toggle it on and off by pressing the tiny arrow on the top left of your social window. You can also show more of the chat by dragging the chat's bottom right corner so you can see more text in it than its default size. Number 123. The general chat can sometimes be obnoxious. 
If you want to turn off just a specific chat channel, but not the others, for example, so you can still see your group chat or guild chat, you can right click the chat tab, choose settings, and uncheck any chat channels you want to hide. Number 124. You can also make custom chat channels by right clicking any tab. For example, you can make a chat tab that only has group chat in it, and you can flip between the main tab and your custom tab to easily see what's being said by your group without losing the other chats completely. Number 125. If you forgot what was said during a previous cutscene and it's not showing up in chat, you can press the chat tab called Other. It logs all kinds of different things, including the cutscene dialogue. Number 126. Here's a fun silly trick. You can type the old Republic credit symbol in chat by holding down Alt on your keyboard and then using the numpad to type 0164. Number 127, if you want to get rid of the million messages about how much XP you earned in the chat, right click your general tab, choose chat settings, and from there scroll down and uncheck the yellow system feedback. Number 128, if you want some easy free XP when you hit the fleet, make sure to pick up the crew skills quest from the terminal near where you first enter the fleet. You'll get a nice chunk of experience just from talking to each crew skill trainer. Number 129, on a free to play account, you'll only be able to choose one crafting crew skill total. Which one you choose should also depend on what you want to be able to make. Choose a crafting skill if you want to be able to make things and are willing to buy the materials, or choose a gathering skill if you want to be able to pick up free materials off the ground and make credits instead. Number 130. Subscribers or players with all three crew skills unlocked usually either pick three gathering skills to make credits, or pick one crafting skill and two complementary gathering skills. Number 131. If you want to be able to craft armor, Pick up the armor mech or synth waving crew skills, which will allow you to craft your own armor, some of which looks really good. Number 132. Choosing the slicing gathering skill will literally give you free credits from finding slicing nodes across the galaxy. You could also choose bioanalysis, archaeology, or scavenging and sell the materials you pick up around the galaxy on the GTN. Or you could hoard them for later if you want to craft. Number 133. If you want to buy a stack of items from a vendor, shift left click on the item and drag it into your inventory. You'll then be able to specify how many of that item you want to buy. Shift left click is also how you split stacks in your inventory. Number 135, if you did happen to have picked up a gathering skill, you can right click crafting nodes and your companion will go gathering them for you. Archaeology ones look like crystals, slicing nodes look like broken computer pieces, scavenging ones look like hunks of junk, and bioanalysis looks like plants. All of them will have glowing blue Star Wars Arbesh text hovering over them and show up as little stars on your minimap. Number 135. At level 15 and higher, even free-to-play players can join the group finder to find others to run flashpoints with. Flashpoints are four-person group content and can be a lot of fun. Number 136. Don't want to group up? Many flashpoints, normally four-person group content, also have a story, aka solo mode, available. Number 137. Some flashpoints are really meant to be played in a specific order or at a specific time in the story. The group finder tries to give you appropriate flashpoints, but it goes by level, not by knowing your story completion. These are the flashpoints that are super safe to queue up for. They're kind of independent in the story timeline. The other flashpoints I recommend saving until you reach them in the story. You can click the filter button in the group finder to check and uncheck specific flashpoints. Number 138. If you want to play with others, but don't know anyone who has the game, join a guild. Joining a guild gives you bonus XP unless you join a group of players with a similar goal. I suggest waiting until you reach level 25 if you're free to play before looking for a guild so you can use chat. Number 139. Not all guilds are created equal. Don't join the first one that invites you, especially if you've never even spoken to the person inviting you. If you happen to meet or group up with someone in-game that you like, you can also ask them if they like their guild and how you can join it. Number 140. Looking for a guild? Visit the SOTOR Guild Finder at SOTORFANCOMMUNITY.COM and use the filters to find a group that meets your needs. Start by filtering by server, then by faction if you only have one character. Number 141. If you play with other people in the group finder, there are some cool rewards you can get, including unique social armors. 
and if you play 40 randomized group finder activities, you'll get a new companion for your character. Number 142, you'll hear other players talking about operations. These are the max level in-game group content that you can do with 8 or 16 people. They're my favorite part of the game, and I've got tons of tips and tricks about joining your first operation once you get that far. Ah, oh, we made it through, amazing. While this guide had 142 tips in it, it only scratches the surface of what Star Wars The Old Republic has to offer and doesn't even touch on what you can do on a high level character. I have literally hundreds of in-depth guides about almost every part of the game, both in video form on YouTube or in written form on sotrisa.com, and I recommend you check them out when you start having questions about specific parts of the game. I hope you enjoyed this ridiculously in-depth video of my favorite tips and tricks about Star Wars The Old Republic. I'd really love to know if you've never heard about any of these tips before or if you learned something new or there was one that made you really, really happy to find out about. If you like this video, leave a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel to get more videos about this game on your YouTube homepage. And if you love this project, where I cover Star Wars The Old Republic in so many different ways, visit sotarisa.com support. May the Force be with you.